Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I'm back with a brand new, or actually the finale of a Deku What If. I don't know why I said brand new. My bad. This is the finale of What If Deku Had a Teleportation Quirk. And as always, if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like, make sure to hit the sub, make sure to check the links in the description below, and uh, yeah, show your support. I appreciate all the support, as always. Um, I w I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for a movie here coming up because obviously we'll have this and then we'll have the compilation or the movie version of this um, of, of uh, Teleportation Quirk Deku and then I want to figure out what I want to do next so I haven't really came up with that maybe it'll be a Deku movie I haven't done a Deku movie in a very long time I don't remember the last time I did an actual Deku movie so uh, yeah we'll figure it out um, nonetheless I hope you all enjoy and uh yeah let's just get right into the finale let's get it toga has now been constrained and frankly they need to figure out where the heck katsuki bakugo currently is but luckily they get some information some information from somebody that was pretty injured when deku actually swooped her up and also another boy that was with her trying to help her out well that is momo yayorozu Momoya Yurozu actually put a tracker on a Nomu that may or may not lead them in the right direction. Azuku immediately says that he wants to see where this tracker leads, and he says that he can get Bakugo in and out immediately. But Aizawa reminds him that that is not a good idea. For one, he doesn't have an actual hero license, and for two, it could easily be a trap. Azuku is frustrated to hear this, but he understands their thought process. But Azuku is then told that, well, he could be in on some sort of a plan. He would then be brought to that so-called interview to speak with everybody about what occurred and to even give the interviewers some two cents about what actually happened and how Bakugo got away, saying that it was really, it was really his fault that it wasn't anybody else's fault but his own, he tried to save Bakugo, he tried to save everybody that was there, using a quirk that was gifted to him by, well, obviously his mother and his father. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And even though these are pro heroes that are teaching them, everybody needs to play a role. Yes, he may be a student, and that's what many of them are currently thinking, but just because they are students doesn't mean they, can, they cannot take on responsibility. Azuku makes all the interviewers nod and basically they're all speaking over and over to them as Bakugo and the League of Villains are currently watching this broadcast. But what they don't know is that their location has already been revealed and the siege on that building is about to begin. Immediately All Might goes smashing through the wall followed by Edshot and many others. This video, this interview was actually not live. It was a pre-recording and the villains have just fallen for it. Immediately the villains are completely subdated and knocked out and just to make sure everything goes perfectly, Azuku would teleport in immediately as the breach happened, grab Bakugo and teleport right back to UA so that the villains have no leverage. But this would then lead to an all for one versus all might battle. Of course, they would all be watching this battle as well. The two titans would go blow for blow. Azuku would watch and wish that he could help, but just as he's seeing All Might being beat, that he's about to be taken out, about to be maybe even killed, he takes one step forward as if he's about to teleport, and Aizawa activates his quirk and shakes his head, telling him that this is out of their league. Even if Azuku is extremely powerful, this right here is something that even All Might wouldn't want him to get in front of. Aizawa nods toward him one last time and tells him to watch the screen and watch All Might truly show why he's the number one hero. All Might, through sheer will and determination, would eventually win the fight, a fight that seemed like he was going to lose. The League of Villains may have gotten away, but All For One would be put in prison, and All Might would handle the fight with grace. But this would lead to the man's retirement, and to give everybody a thumbs up, telling them all that they are next. Azuku knows what he means by this, and even Bakugo at the same time does as well, having his suspicions about Azuku. 
But no one else really knows, being clueless and thinking that this was just a quirk evolution for Izuku and him being stronger is just part of his quirk, well, he's not going to basically dissuade them otherwise, especially against All Might's wishes. Eventually, school would start up once again, and they would begin learning new super moves, learning any techniques that would help them in the future. This is when the real training would currently begin. Of course, Izuku would push himself harder and harder, especially with his classmates, and eventually it would lead to something known as the Provisional Hero Licensing Exam. Azuku thinks this is great. I mean, getting his hero license as soon as possible is something he wants to do right now. So when they all head over about halfway through the week, Azuku would arrive and everybody would kind of fanboy over Class 1A. But of course, they don't actually know who Azuku is. Azuku wasn't, un well, was unfortunately unable to attend the UA Sports Festival, being that he was kind of out of commission. So they have no idea what his quirk is, and if for those who, well, don't understand where we're going with that, let's just say this is going to make things a lot easier for Class 1A. Because when the first event is revealed to be basically a ball event that would allow them to basically knock people out using, using these red balls, it would be pretty easy for his class because Izuku would be able to wrangle up a ton of people with relative ease and nobody's going to be even able to touch him. Azuku would get would get him well his place in the next event relatively easily and so would mo the majority or most of class 1a some of them who straggled off of course would have the same struggles that they originally had but those around Azuku would basically be easily just handled like nothing Azuku would then head out and wait for that next event waiting with his entire class as the next event would begin though there would be a little bit more struggle than Azuku would believe. Of course, Azuku has a teleportation quirk, which makes rescuing extremely easy, and he just teleports the mass majority of people out of situations or, or just out of any trouble. But what he didn't realize is there's going to be more to this exam, so he shouldn't have exhausted himself as much as he currently did. But nonetheless, he's just going to have to lean on these other people to actually well, fight. Azuku would watch as the sirens begin to blare, and these so-called villains and also gang Orca would arrive, telling them all that it's, well, time for the heroes to be taken down. Of course, the most of the stronger people there would immediately take the forefront, but it would be shown that gang Orca is stronger than what most everybody would think. Azuku would watch on as Shoto Toroki and Inasa would hold the lines, but of course they would begin their bickering, their arguing, and Azuku would yell toward them, telling them to focus up and actually do their job. Azuku would continue saving as many people as possible, but in turn, definitely making himself tired. Just as he realizes it though, or just out of nowhere, Shoto Todoroki and Inasa would seemingly, well, bite the bullet on themselves and begin to work in sync, making this flame vortex around Gang Orca. Just as he does this, it seems like they're about to take him down, but Gang Orca pulls something out. Is that a water jug? Azuku would immediately teleport within the vortex. Yes, this does make him extremely tired, but he slaps away the water jug away from Gang Orca, and just as Gang Orca tries to grab Azuku, Azuku teleports out without him even being able to touch him. This then drains Gang Orca entirely, eventually bringing him to his knees, making a Gang Orca completely just knock out. Of course, Inasa and Todoroki barely could tell what Azuku did, but everyone else could tell what, what, he, what occurred. Azuku knows how, how to use his strengths and his weaknesses against people. This teleportation aspect of his quirk allowed him to basically exploit a weakness that Gang Orca thought he had covered. But of course, to Azuku, he made sure that wasn't the case, that there was no weakness that wasn't going to be basically recovered from. After that, sirens would begin to blare again, and a voice on the intercom would tell them that the provisional hero license exam is over. After everybody heads out, they would all wait on their scores, and when their scores would eventually show up, Azuku would almost get a 
perfect score. Of course, Azuku's quirk made the rescue portion extremely easy, and just utilizing his quirk to his best of abilities just to support his, his classmates definitely helps his, his score go up like crazy. And there's really no complaining about someone just zipping in and out, saving every single person that's there with no real, well, you could say repercussions or no real, well, substantial injuries. Azuku would be happy about this and smile at the fact that he got his provisional hero licensing, licensing exam or his, his license. But the only problem is, is Azuku knows in his head that there is more to all of this than he would possibly believe. This would then lead them to their work studies. The work studies is what really matters and the whole reason why they got this whole license. So Azuku begins to look through any work studies that he can possibly go to, but just as they're basically informed about this, Aizawa thinks it's a great idea to get the big three to actually explain to them what's going to happen. And of course, it goes about the same. They don't really know how to explain, leading to Mirio wanting to fight them, which is definitely interesting. Azuku would then wait for Mirio to give his go-ahead, and then tells them all that they're going to be fighting at the same time, which confuses Azuku, especially because he feels that this is extremely dangerous. Nonetheless, Mirio screams out power and begins to put the whooping on Class 1A. It was then Azuku's turn, and frankly, Mirio and Azuku just straight up can't hit each other. Azuku can't really time up his his strikes onto Mirio because, well, Mirio is really good with his quirk, but at the same time, Mirio just whiffs on Azuku every time he even gets close, just teleporting out of, out of the way of danger, and Azuku just keeps his distance relatively easily, even using some of One For All to basically send wind shockwaves toward Mirio, and especially that he's able to use about 10 to 15% of One For All after a ton of training, but even that, it kind of brings them to a stalemate. But his class is extremely impressed, so is Aizawa, and obviously the rest of the big three, because how is he able to keep up this well? Of course, he feels bad that like the rest of his classmates kind of got torn to shreds, and Kirishima wasn't really able to show off any training he's been doing, and the rest of his class really wasn't, because, I mean, Mirio just straight up countered them entirely, but this then leads to them having a quote-unquote draw. And Mirio is extremely impressed and says that that is definitely something he would expect from someone that, that Night Eye himself wanted to see. Of course, this would lead to them chatting a little bit more after class and would eventually lead them to getting Izuku into a work study with Night Eye. Of course, they wouldn't have any little stamp test because Azuku can literally teleport. There is no stopping him from grabbing the stamp, in my opinion. On top of one for all, it would be too easy for him. Nonetheless, though, Azuku feels that this is a great experience for him, especially with someone like Nidai. But Nidai immediately gets straight to the chase, talking about why he's here. He's seen Azuku, and he thinks that his quirk is literally perfect for this scenario, perfect for scouting, and perfect for getting information as quick as possible. Azuku is completely down for this as he gets explained everything, learning about the Shia Hazaikai and who they're going after, Overhaul. And yes, Overhaul most likely will not be spotted on their first patrols, but at the same time they need to be ready to do what they need to do. With Azuku, with them, well, with Azuku there, they want a place on the slim chance that he shows up, they want Azuku to know exactly where to teleport him. They show him just an area, as, or Nidai shows him an area of where the basically containment is, and it will completely cancel off both of their quirks. So of course, Azuku's going to have to get out of there without using his quirk, but no real reason to fear. There's going to be backup heroes there, and well, they both won't have their quirks, so it's not like they'll be defenseless, or it's not like he'll be completely defenseless against Overhaul's quirk. And this would actually, well, you could say, turn out to be the best because these prearrangements would eventually mean that Overhaul would be caught. During a bit of a patrol with Mirio and Azuku, they would come across an alleyway with a little girl that would stumble into, well, himself and Mirio. When this occurred, Azuku would pat her on the head to see if she's okay. This girl's name is Eri. 
and the person that comes out of the alleyway next is Overhaul. As immediately, Azuku picks up Eri and basically keeps it as casual as possible, telling him that, oh, it's okay, that he gets it, that, you know, kids are going to be kids. He walks up toward Overhaul to basically give Eri back to him, quote unquote, grabbing him on the shoulder and patting him there, saying that he's trying his best as a father. Just as he says this, though, all three of them are teleported somewhere entirely different, with guns loaded and a bunch of, a, well, a bunch of heroes immediately coming outside. Yes, they're not top tier heroes, but they're heroes at that. The Night Eye Agency would eventually arrive on the scene, and Azuku would be commended heavily for what he did, the plan he executed, and frankly, it's for the best that nobody even really knew what Azuku's powers are. Because if he did, or if Overhaul did, Overhaul might have been able to figure it out or counter it as soon as possible. With that said, their job isn't quite done yet, because, well, they're gonna have to go and take out the rest of the Shiha Zaikai, but at the end of the day, everything will fall into place relatively quickly. Azuku and the Night Eye Agency and many others would team up and eventually lay siege on the Shiha Zaikai, well, secret hideout. And once they arrive, it ends quicker than you could possibly imagine. Of course, with Overhaul not there, the sequence of events would lay out pretty easily. On top of that, everybody would kind of fall to either Mirio, Azuku, or Nidai. Frankly, Azuku would be able to kind of subdue people relatively quickly with his teleportation quirk. So the Chiha Zaikai entirely would be shut down in a matter of days. And all because of, well, Azuku Midoriya. After some more time spending with uh, the Night Eye work study, Azuku would finally be sent back to, well, UA. Of course, they've been going to classes and stuff, but they have a more of a major event coming up. And that event is the Class 1A versus Class 1B. Of course, over this time, Azuku has been training like crazy. And he basically begins to head over to, well, where they're going to be fighting. As he heads over there though, he bumps into a boy by the name of Shinso, someone he actually has heard about but hasn't really spoken to at all because, well, he wasn't in the UA Sports Festival. He meets him for the first time and learns of Aizawa teaching him and also training him overall and that he is going to be implemented in this Class 1A versus Class 1B. All of the fights would go relatively the same, and you could argue that Kirishima would probably do a lot better than he would in canon because of his connection with Izuku, pre previous training, and just how much further ahead he would have been compared to canon. On top of that though, the, the fights with Izuku versus Class 1B would go, well, relatively similar. Azuku would power up one for all far past than what we would or what he normally would of course probably hovering around 20 to 25 percent so closer to canon or maybe a little bit higher and Azuku would utilize his teleportation with one for all making his speed insanely fast to teleport people in and out uh, or basically to the cage or a prison that would allow them to win the match relatively easily but of course, don't get this wrong, Class 1B did have a pretty good idea of what to do, and of, co of course Monoma would steal the quirk from Azuku. But the only problem is, Azuku has two quirks, meaning that this would be recognized by Monoma, but at the same time would drastically confuse him. But you have to remember, Azuku's teleportation quirk isn't that simple. It's not something that he would be able to pick up, especially off a whim, and there's a good chance he could definitely hurt himself if he's not careful, because like I've said in the past, it's miniature portals that Azuku uses that most people can't see with the bare eye, and it happens so quickly that Monoma might actually fail to actually utilize it properly. Nonetheless though, 
they continue with their fights and Azuku utilizing his quirks and the strengths of his his teammates ranging from Ochako Uraraka and various others would win in a pretty much of a landslide but during this battle during the very very last bit of it when there's practically only one to two people left on the the one one B side Azuku would unleash a power that he would have no idea how to control and no idea that was within him. That would be Black Whip. Black Whip would begin to run haywire around like crazy, but luckily he was able he's able to get it tamed and done over with, and since there wasn't many Class 1B students left, it didn't necessarily matter in the grand scheme of things. But Azuku would realize that there is more to the quirk of One For All than he possibly could imagine. Azuku, after this entire incident, would begin to take training even more serious and begin his training with with the Big Three and even the Sir Night Ice Agency more and more, especially because he, well, is doing a work study with him. And since Sir Night Eye is not, well, deceased, that work study would 100% continue especially with the training between with Mirio maybe even some of the big three and Night Eye himself Azuku would begin to get a bigger grasp on everything he begins to learn from one for all to black whip to anything you could really think of and even more his teleportation quirk would continue to evolve but what he doesn't know and what he doesn't realize is that there's something that is just over the horizon there is something that is terrifying, something that is, well, bone chilling. A war is coming, and a war is being spotted out by the one and only Hawks. Hawks is currently giving information to Endeavor and various other heroes that he can trust, and that includes Sir Nighteye. And when the code is cracked, and it's realized that a war is upon them, how will Class 1A, Class 1B, and various other heroes and heroes in training react to the news? Well, how well will Izuku fight in this war that is only months away? Well, that's a story for another day, and frankly, a story that may or may not be told. And if you enjoyed the finale of What If Deku Had a Teleportation Court, make sure to leave a like, a sub, and a comment down below, all that good stuff. Um, as y'all know, I go based on what has been out on the anime. Um, the anime isn't to the war arc yet. I just don't do anything past the anime. So, um, if y'all enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, a sub. If, if, you, if I get enough, like, oh my god, we want into the war arc, I might do that. But I just don't do past anime. I just don't go into manga. So, um, that's just because I know most people don't read manga. As much as some people will disagree with that, I've I've had a lot more people say that they have never read the manga compared to just watching anime because I feel like it's more of a casual fan base. But um, for those who want to see the manga or see me adapted to the manga, um, if you show a ton of love, maybe we'll get to that. But nonetheless, I hope you all enjoy and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.